the amount of the, the lot coverage necessary significantly over the allowed 35 percent. Literal interpretation of the zoning ordinance would prevent the applicant from being able to construct any new structures as the size of the mobile home that they have existing and the two foot elevated deck off the side of the mobile home contribute to 35 percent lot coverage as is. Exceeding that lot coverage is not a common right in any zoning classification and staff determined that it, it was not the minimum variance necessary to make reasonable use of the land as the property has been developed and in use for um, since 1973 as is. Uh, variance 11 is an additional variance on there for a variance to reduce the south side yard setback or requirement of 15 feet for a proposed dock. So as you can see on the site plan, where that green line is, there's a, a chunk of land that or essentially where grass and has pulled further south than what was originally platted. So reviewing the historical platting for this property, the canal was actually supposed to go up to the northern edge of the property line where that solid red line is that goes horizontally. In actuality, the seawall is where this green line is. So it pushes the amount of space that the applicant has accessing the canal further to the south. And due to our regulations for boathouse and docks under 72-278 requires uh, typically a 15 foot uh, setback to the extension of the water or the property line along the waterway. So that's why the request is for a reduction from 15 feet to 0 0.25 feet to allow the applicant to fit a, a boathouse and a little walkway and dock onto the canal. It was staff recommendation based on the criteria that this met zero of the five criteria for granting said variances. Um, adding a proposed dock and boathouse to property is obviously resulting in the applicant's own action. Literal interpretation would prevent the applicant from being able to construct the dock. Um, having a dock or, or boathouse on a property is, is not a common right in, enjoyed in any zoning classification. It's, it's a, um, essentially a, a luxury um, accessory to a property, and it's not necessary to make reasonable use of the land. Uh, granting the, the variance, however, would not likely be injurious to the area as numerous adjacent properties developed. Um, oh, I, I stand corrected. I, I uh, previously said that variance 11 felt all five. It, it, it felt four of the five. It, it met uh, criteria five. So for the general intent of the uh, Zoning ordinance and comprehensive plan. Based on the developmental pattern of the surrounding properties, there are a number of properties that are similar in scope to this. So staff made the determination that criteria five would be fine. Staff has considered once again the property owner's rights. The property owner has the right to improve their property. However, any improvements are subject to the meeting the zoning ordinance and local ordinances, including lot size, unless granted a variance by the PLERC. Uh, with that, I'll stand for any questions the board may have. Mr. Hanson, I just want to do a clarification here. You mentioned uh, variance 11 as being the 0 0.2. In other words, variance 10 and 11, you, you got mixed up there because you mentioned variance 11 in our packet. It shows the uh, setback of variance 10, not 11. Uh, sorry for the confusion. Looking at the most recent staff report, uh, variance 10 should be the maximum lot coverage variance, and variance 11 was for the dock and boat house. Okay. So we'll make a notation on our staff report, correct? So it, it is way the way you presented it. In other words, According to our packet, we've got variance 10 where it should be 11, and 11 where 10 should be. I just said any thing, discussion we have, I want to make sure we're. Oh, I, I, the I right completely variance. understand, sir. Um, I assume at some point during the internal review process, the order of the variances 
somehow got shuffled at some point. Uh, just, just to clarify, um, for variance 10, it's, is it not the reduction of the setback for the proposed dock from 15 feet to 0 0.25? Uh, that's what we have in the variance summary, and I think what we have in the conditions. Oh, oh no, 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 but in, in the report itself, okay. The report okay, in the report itself on, on page yes. 2 of 23, it's got them pushed around. Okay. Okay, so, so <clears throat> right. this, both the summary Just, and the... Yeah. Oh, I just so want to make sure we don't get confused that <clears throat> we're making a motion. I, I see what? that now as far as on the, the variant summary. It looks like the order got, got mixed up as we adapted this to, uh, to, to add that with the number of variances. So we will correct the variant site plan as well so that that's in the correct order. I just want to yeah. make sure we're, we're addressing the right variances because uh, page 11 has it as the, uh, as the same as yeah. the r reference, yeah. Page 11 in the staff report also has it. And just, just to clarify for everyone, when we're talking about variance 10, we're talking about the lot coverage. For the combined, well, and I just then, want to make sure everyone is on. And then point. variance eleven would be the setback for the dock okay. from to zero point two five feet. So that's that's okay. okay. All right. Any other questions for staff? I just have one quick question for you. If uh, variances one through six are approved, what is the maximum lot coverage? Does it exceed to thirty five percent? So with the math that I had re reviewed. With the existing structure, with the addition of the elevated ramp that's been in place, that would put the property at 35% lot coverage. Okay, so if we approve variances one through six, I think my point is we do not have to do a variance for maximum lot coverage. Is that correct? That, that should be correct, sir. I want him to have to come back because he's maximizing the lot. Coverage. Yep. So when I when I Drafted the staff report, the variance for maximum lot coverage is included with the new proposed because the existing did not require it. Got it. That's what I needed to know. All right. The applicant present. Good morning, sir. If I could get your name and address for the record. Michael Wise, 84 Cunningham Drive. All right, so you've heard the staff report. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Uh, so covered in all of it. Um, the pretty much setbacks and everything, and how. Sorry? You speak up a little bit. I didn't catch some of your comments. I was just saying that um, the the entire neighborhood in there is not really conforming to the new uh, setbacks for the zoning or anything that's out of the ordinary neighborhood. All right. Any questions? Yeah. All right, we do have one participation form that will speak, and then I'll have the opportunity to come back and do a rebuttal if you'd like. And um, if you just want to have a seat up here, and then I'll have them come forward. Okay, I've got a Mr. William Wilson. Good morning, sir. If I can get your name and address for the record. My name is William Wilson. I live at 1603 Bream Drive, directly across the street from this property. All right, sir. Do you have a comment you'd like to make on this case? Um, well, the former owner that lived there overdosed and died and was in the home dead for over a week. Um, I was the one that cleaned the house out. And definitely something needs to be done with the place. But I just don't see where there's any room to do what he wants to do. 
At the end of the canal on that picture you showed there where there's no man's land, that seawall is totally collapsed. It's got to, going to have to be repaired. HOA is in charge of the canal. I don't know why they haven't done anything about it. All the way around the outside of this property, the former owner has planted palm trees in, in the county right away. So he can't get in and out of his driveway without driving on my property. I've asked him multiple times to stay off my property. I posted my property, and he still continues to drive on my property. He was just on it last Saturday. He's run my water meter box over three times. The water lines run through his property on that side of the road. I finally had to have my pipes flushed because there was so much sand in my lines from it leaking. Um, third time they came in, they put the new electronic meter in there, and they said, any more damage to it, and I'll be liable for it. Um, I just don't see where there's any room for all this. He can't even come over and mow the yard without parking on somebody else's property to mow the yard. He, on the corner of that lot is the main valve for the whole neighborhood, my whole street. He's destroyed it turning around on it. I got pictures of it. It's smashed. It's a, it, we're going to have major problems if he, if he destroys that meter for all the neighborhood. Uh, and like I said, I'm not opposing him doing something to the place. Something definitely has to be done. It looks terrible. But I don't think he's competent enough to do it without damaging any more utilities or trespassing on anybody else's property. He bought the property without having it surveyed. He thought he owned across the street. I had to inform him that he doesn't own that property across the street. I own half of it, and the neighbor down on the other corner owns half of it. But like I said, something definitely needs to be done with that property. But I just don't think that he can do, he's going to be able to do what he says he's going to do without causing any more problems for the rest of the neighborhood. All right, sir. Um, let me ask you this. Now, you're, which property owner are you according to this? You go to page 17, Chair. Oh, sorry. There you go. Yeah, which house is yours? I am on the right. No, I'm, I'm right there, yes. Right there. Mm -hmm. So he can't come out of his driveway and make that turn without driving across my front yard. I've come out in the middle of the night and he's been three feet out the front of my house trying to back a boat up the driveway. There's just no room. That lot is so small. And like they said, all these homes were built before regulation. They're all built by unlicensed contractors. Half these docks on this canal were built by unlicensed, unlicensed contractors. And now we're having to deal with it. I, like I said, I just bought that home. And, and there's an addition built on the back by an unlicensed contractor. And I'm having to do all kinds of work to it to keep it up. But like I said, I don't think there's... And you can see on this map... You can see the palm trees that are planted right along the edge of the road all the way around. Those trees got to be removed for him to get in and out of his property. He can't continue to back out his driveway and back into my front yard. Everybody keeps using my front yard as the turnaround there, and it's just not working. There's a, on my side of the road is the sewage, and there's a manhole right there. And sooner or later, somebody's going to fall through that manhole. Okay. Well, we're here to address the variances, actually, mm -hmm. not necessarily right of ways as far mm -hmm. as him trespassing or that nature. That's something that you'd have to take up with the proper authority. But I'm just saying he, he's wanting to add more, and there's no room for more. Okay. How wide is that canal? Not very wide, and uh, the HOA is in charge of it. And like I said, that whole end of that canal is collapsed. And if he builds a boathouse there, he's going to have to fix the seawall. There won't be any, any access or any room to see in the canal. You know, it'll be totally blocked off on that end. So. Okay. And, and, like, and that water's probably five feet deep, four feet deep. At that end, it, it's real shallow. So I don't know if he's going to be able to get a big boat in there. Okay. Any other, any other questions, questions for the speaker? All right, sir. I appreciate you. your comments this morning. Do we have anybody else who would like to speak to this case? All right, I'll ask the applicant to come back and address any of the concerns that the speaker had.
Just wanted to add that the neighbor directly behind the property has a bow house, which is what I'm do. And I believe they sent in a recommendation here stating that it's Did we get that? Oh, it's in the packet. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions for the applicant? Yeah, I just make a notation. It looks like his house is the only one that doesn't have a boat out. Looking at the, the aerial. My question to the applicant is, if you put a carport on there, how are you going to be able to access that without going on the adjacent property on his property? Without going on property. <laughs> Um, I just had a trailer there Saturday, and I don't believe I was on his property when I backed it in there. Because, okay, we're not going to, okay, we're not going to go there, okay. I appreciate the comment, but we're not going to go there. And there, there's a driveway there now. <laughs> so. All right. Any other questions for the applicant or statements? Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, seeing that we don't have anyone else to speak to this case, I'm gonna close the floor for public participation of mission discussion. I'd like to bring up staff again. I have a question for staff. Mr. Cross. <clears throat> this is a non-conforming lot, right? Uh, yes, sir. The it's thousand foot, thousand square foot short. Entered. Sorry. Okay, so thousand square foot short, correct? Yes, sir, it's if about 4,000 square feet in the MH5 zone. If this was a conforming lot, would it meet the would the uh, variance for the lot coverage go away? You not, have you not have you done that math? If it was a conforming lot, it would have a uh, maximum lot coverage at seventeen hundred and fifty square feet. The proposed structure, if I recall correctly, was two thousand two hundred and thirty square feet. So it still exceeds. Would still be the, over, sir. But not not by this percentage, though. No, it would be a significantly smaller percentage. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. If we were to, uh, this is a question for staff also. If we were to pass any of these variances on the, to this water, is there any regulation that we would have to go through, that he would have to go through in order for, to do that for the seawall and anything like that? That I'm, I'm not entirely sure as far as what kind of permitting process you'd have to go through for reconstruction of a seawall. But it would be outside of of the, the PLDRC, so I think that'd be yeah, something that'd be handled at the building permitting level. Okay. All right. So just to follow up on that, he will, um, during the building permit process, he will have to get a wetland alteration permit, and they will address any issues. That's my question. Yeah. All right, thank you. Right. Anybody like? <laughs> we'll close. We're closing the floor for public participation. Open up for commission discussion. And I'm, I'm looking at this a lot, and I'm wondering. There's a piece of property right in there. It looks like from the aerials. I'm just wondering what's happening to that little piece of property right in there. It looks like a. You know, I'm seeing two pieces of property little stick out piece and then move, no down further right coming uh, over a little bit and down that uh, in the no the other way over in the water right in the canal yeah yeah right in yeah right in those, those areas right in there those no, the little lines aren't accurate, Jay. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out. There looks like there's some property where he's trying to add a his 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 boat dock. That's the only thing I'm trying to clarify in my mind. So to clarify the answer to your question, sir, um, I verified with looking over the survey that the survey is more accurate. Where there there was a, a mapping error where in our GIS maps, it shows the, the property boundary, shows that little flag 
uh, poll taped that you're referring mm -hmm. to. According to the survey that's in the staff report, that's not the case. It's actually a rectangular shape lot, and my measurements were based off of the survey. Okay. So he's not going to have to remove any property there. Uh, there's nothing developed in that, that corner. Thank you. Okay. Where are we feeling? What are we feeling there? And I think a variant, I know variance is one through six shouldn't be that big of an issue for us. Okay. Variant seven, you've got a, that's for the carport. Eight, nine. I, d I just have an issue. You know, I don't want them to set up a situation where we approve a variance and they build something and then come to find out you can't access your property because it's sticking out and you got to get around the whatever it's got to get. That's where I stand on that one. Okay. Because it's going to extend to the corner. Mm -hmm. Gonna stay inside those palm trees for sure. My but, concern uh, is, is, you know, how's he, how's he gonna access that carpool without? Because that right away doesn't look like it's that great, right? Does anybody know how big the, the actual right away is? And you start back at a trailer or something in there, like uh, mm -hmm. I'm getting off on the side into the. May be in the right of way, but you're going to be in over your utility, utilities and everything else trying to get a trailer in there <coughs> with a carport there. That, that's my concern. And uh, and then go into that 57%, I guess it was, was it 57? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 57.5% block covered. And then the uh, boat dock. I mean, we're supposed to look at every case individually, and to, to reduce that setback for boathouse to the water's edge, pretty much. Yeah, I'm more. The dock have to have the variance too. Yes, yes. The the var dock variance is um. I think going to be variance number 11. So that's the variance to reduce the south side setback from 15 feet to 0 0.25 for the proposed dock and boathouse. Yeah. Because remember, we measure it 15 feet from the extension of the property line. So the, um, the southern part of that dock and boathouse will be within that 15 feet. Well, I just wanted to give you where I'm, where my thought process, the discussion on it. Well, it looks to me if you deny variance 10, which is the max lot coverage, that effectively wipes out seven through seven through nine. Correct. Correct. Instantaneously. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, seven through. Seven through nine is the carport, is it? Well, which is what's causing the, uh, the the block coverage. So if you if you're I mean, you can sit there and approve seven through nine, and then deny on on ten, and then it basically negates everything above it. Those all go away because you can't do it without lot coverage. I agree. <clears throat> can can we take these in, in stages? Yes, we can. All right. In that case, keep the ball rolling here. Let's do. I'd uh, make a motion to approve variances one, two, three, four, five, and six on case V two two dash zero eight eight. I'll second that. Okay, I got a motion to, to approve variances one through six on case number V two two dash zero eight eight for Mr. Costa and a second for Ms. Shelley. That's with the staff recommended condition. There are no recommended conditions for one through six. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So is there any discussion on the motion? 
Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. So now we're going to address uh, variances 7 through 11. With an individual, well, you pretty much stated as far as the lot covered. I, I, yeah, I don't see any other way around it. If you, if you approve those seven through, was it seven through nine or seven through, this is reversed on the screen, right? So it's um, seven, yeah. eight, nine, and 11 as we see it on the screen. Is that right? I mean, six, or seven, eight, nine, and 11, yeah, Ten, on the screen. Okay. It's, it's variance 10, though. 10 is the one we're, okay, so 10 is part of that package, and the, the lot coverage is what throws us all into a tizzy. Right. Um, so the screen is incorrect? Yes. Yeah. And our pack correct. That's correct. Neither. But in saying that, we can work on the lot coverage if you were to approve the dock. If you take out the carport. It depend on what the percentage would be after that, because it would reduce that fifty-seven percent taken out carport, but you would still have the dock boat. Out. Now, I don't know how you feel about the dock and the boathouse. I mean, I just don't know what it would do into that corner of that canal, trying to get up in there and get turned around. I got a pro. I got a problem with the with the. The, the well variance eleven the the dock as well ten and eleven is where I stand I've got a problem with them an issue with the carport because I know that he's not be able to buy back a boat into that carport mm -hmm. road <clears throat> just my experience. maybe he's a better boat backer up than I am. That's where I'm at with that. All right. I tell you, the, the, the property right next door, I mean, of course, they've all got like carports, but I don't know how that one, the lot covers looks like it covered most of the whole lot. I understand, mm -hmm. but we have to take each know, individual yeah. case and all face right. some individual. So who knows if it was even permitted? And, 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 well, that and their boat health. I, I look at the picture, and, it, and if we deny him access to the boathouse, yeah, it's it's not to his it's to his detriment because if you look to the look to the property on the left of this picture here, they're obviously have it's basically he's mirroring what they've got there, boathouse and, and a small dock. So they've already they've already bottlenecked up the end of that the end of that canal is unusable. It's it's probably only a foot of deep of water, if even that. So it's, not, it's not navigable water anyways. So they're all coming in and basically his only boat access is that one little sliver he's got uh, before his property jogs out going up in the picture right there. Yeah. Um, I mean, I hate to take away the, his ability to use that waterway and that boathouse. Uh, but at the same time, the, the overall, I do have a problem with the 57% coverage that that's an issue. Well, if we took out the square footage on the carport, reduce that 57. Well, your hands. I still got a problem with that dock. Is when you got point two five, two five, I can see where if there's an error or anything happening to that dock, you could be on the other person's property. I, that bothers me too. I mean, I'd like to see that boat dock cut off maybe a foot or so so that you you don't get that close to the neighbor's block line either. I think those are my two big issues. Mr. Hansen, if we were to take out variances seven, eight, and nine for the over for the carport. Right? What would it do for the lot coverage? All right, if we took out variances 789 for that proposed roof over overhang that acts as a carport. That would put us back to where he'd be at at 35% with the existing structures. And but the boathouse and the no, the the, the boathouse is uh, 
in the waterway, and I might have to get assistance from our legal whether or not the actual boathouse counts towards lot coverage because it's technically not on a lot. So per section 72-278, it allows a boathouse uh, or dock to be up to 750 square feet. But from my understanding, it doesn't count towards lot coverage because it's not actually on the lot, it's in the water. So that, that clarifies things a bit because that middle of the, the canal is, I think, a separate parcel it's right of way. Um, and we've got limitations on 750 square feet, uh, roofed or unroofed. So your calculations on lot coverage does not include the boathouse. That's correct. It does not include the boathouse for my calculation for lot coverage. Oh. Okay, uh, that's that, okay. Yep. All right, let me, uh, I have one question before you walk away. I just want to verify something because I want to make a motion here. Variance 11 in your book. Yes, sir. Variance 11 is the reduction of the south side yard setback from 15 to 0.25 feet. Is that correct? Yes, so what you're seeing, uh, you're essentially flipping variance 10 and 11. I just, yes or no, yeah. So that is number 11 is reduction from 15 to 0.25, correct? Yes, sir. All right, that's all I needed to know. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion okay. that we approve variance 11, which is the reduction of the setback from 15 to 0.25 for the proposed dock on case number V-22-088. And then we'll come back to the other four. And we'll, I will second that one. Okay, I've got a motion to approve variance 11, which is the, the, the variance to reduce the south side yard setback from 15 feet to 0.25 feet for a proposed dock and boathouse on case V22-088 for Mr. Costa and a second for Mr. Sixman. Sixman. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Repeat that again. Okay, we're doing a lot. This, this pertains, and is there a condition that this is strictly for the dock and the boathouse, correct? Well, because if we don't do anything with the overall lot coverage, they can't do anything different anyway. Yes, they cannot add to the existing structure by a carport or by anything. They're capped at 35%. Mm -hmm. Got it. So I'll add with the two recommended staff conditions then that on number on number 11. Okay. Okay. With the two, two staff recommended yeah. conditions yeah. on the left. Fine. Yep. You good with that, Second. Mr. Six? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Just repeat again, what is variance 11? Variance 11 is the side set back from 15 feet to 0.25 feet for the proposed dock. Okay. And that addresses your boat dock and your, and your boat house. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? All right. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries four to one with Mr. Young and dissent. Now, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion uh, that we approve variance number seven, eight, nine, and 10, number 10 being the maximum lot coverage from 35% to 57.5% on case number V-22-088 with the staff recommended conditions. That was a motion for approval. You know what, I'll second that just to forward it. Yep. Okay, I've got a motion to approve variances seven, eight, nine, ten, and ten. With the staff recommended conditions from Mr. Costa on variant B22-088 and the second for Mr. Sixma. Any discussion on the motion? Okay, hearing that, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Any opposed? Aye. aye. Mr. Chair, can we get a roll call? Yes. Sorry. This is for a roll call for approval. Member Young? Against. Member Shelley? Aye. Member Costa? No. Member Sixma? Aye. 
Chair Mills? No. The motion fails um, two to three. Uh, you can take an affirmative vote to deny it, or you can just leave it as it lies. Uh, Mr. Chair, if you can ask any, you know, any further motions. If no further motions, then the question presented on those variance applications is considered not approved by uh, the commission. Any other motions on this case? Can you repeat that? Uh, well, essentially, it was a motion to approve, which failed. So there could be additional motions to for additional conditions, or any person can make a motion to deny those variances. And that just, if that passes, that's that kills it right there. But the other, the rest of the motions still pass. It doesn't kill. I mean, the rest of the variances are yes, approved. Yes. You, is that right? You split the question. So it's really the question is on seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the question, do we approve it? Failed. Um, you can approve it with an, another condition, or you can just deny it outright. Well, that's a discussion for us. Let it lay. Or we can just, yeah, you can just leave it as is. Yeah. We don't have to do a motion for denial. We can, we, it couldn't meet the, the right. approval. If there's no further motions, then it's the, the question presented fails, and the request is deemed denied. OK, we're moving on. Ms. Shelley, can I get the next case, please? Case number V, <clears throat> V22089. Variance to separate non-conforming lots on rural agricultural zoned property. Thank you, Ms. Shelley. Back right here. Ms. Cushing, good morning. Good morning, Commission members. Sarah Cushing, Planning and Development Services. What we have before you today is a variance for separation of non-conforming lots. The applicant is Mr. John Haley, and the parcels are located at 1920 and 1926 Enterprise Osteen Road in the Deltona area. Both parcels are developed with single family residences and sandwiched right in between is an existing um, garage. And based off the land development memo that was included with the staff report, research shows that both parcels were created before 1976 and conforming at that time of creation. Um, furthermore, the parcels were purchased at separate times with those permitted houses and the permitted garage already on the property. However, today's zoning classification is rural agriculture and requires a 2.5 acre lot area and a lot width of 150 feet. The subject parcel outlined in red on the aerial map on the screen is just under one acre and the adjoining parcel is approximately half an acre. Therefore, both are non-conforming. And since they are under current common ownership, un the applicant was unable to get a good non-conforming lot letter. The applicant wishes to sell this property that's outlined in red, but he wants to continue to keep and reside in the, par the adjoining parcel that's outlined in yellow, while also maintaining access to the garage that's on the property. So he went through our land development office and applied for a lot line adjustment to kind of change the lot line. So instead of it going straight across, it kind of zigzags. It's not going to modify the square footage of either of those parcels. He just wants to sell this bigger parcel while still residing in that other one and maintaining access to that existing garage. So because of that current common ownership, in order to do that lot line adjustment with land development, a variance for a separation of non-conforming lots will be required. Our land development office has reviewed this request and issued what's called a notice of intent to approve the lot lines subject to this variance approval. Staff has taken into consideration property rights whenever assessing this application, and we feel that it implicates considerations two and four. The property owner does have the ability to use, develop, and maintain their property and dispose of his or her property subject to the local ordinances, including our local zoning ordinance and standards. Staff does not believe, though, that this variance implicates considerations one or three. In conclusion, 
Upon review of this request, staff has recommended approval of this variance as it meets all five applicable criteria for granting said variance. Um, it meets criteria one and two that both of these parcels met the minimum zoning requirements at the time of creation. Um, they all, both have permitted primary structures that was built prior to the current common ownership and that the current zoning, however, makes these parcels non-conforming and that common ownership to separate those lots is required. It also meets condition or criteria three, that literal interpretation of this code would prevent the owners from making any lot line adjustments. This may be considered an unnecessary hardship as the lots will remain essentially the same size and configuration. There will be no change to the road frontage on either Fireman's Lane or Enterprise Osteen Road, and no additional lots will be created. It also meets criteria four that this is the minimum variance, make reasonable use of the land, and allow for the parcels to be separated so that the owners may proceed with their lot line adjustment. Lastly, criteria five, granting of this variance will not be injurious to the area. There will be no discernible change to either parcel and neither will become more non-conforming by allowing the variance in the subsequent lot line adjustment. So should the PLDRC find the applicants have provided competent substantial evidence to support approval of the variance, this variance is offered with no conditions. Thank you and I'm available for any questions that you may have. Thank you, Ms. Cushing. Any questions for staff? This is just a cleanup, right? <laughs> okay. All right. Is the applicant present? Would you like to come forward, sir? You heard the staff report. I mean, forget your name and address. My for name is John Haley. I live at 1926 Enterprise Osteen Road, Deltona. All right. And you've heard the staff report. Is yes. there anything you'd like to add to that? No, sir. All right. Any questions for the applicant? All right, sir. We'll see if we got any public participation. Do we have any public participation for this case? Well, I do not have any. Okay, we're going to close the floor for public participation up front. Commission discussion or a motion. Mr. Okay. Chair, I'd like to make a motion. We approve case V-22-089 with, and there are no conditions. Second. Okay, I got a motion to approve variance V-22-089 and uh, from Mr. Costa and a second from Ms. Shelley. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimous. Next case, please. Yes, sir. Case number V-22090. A variance to reduce the minimum yard requirements on rural agricultural zoned property. Thank you, Ms. Shelley. And Ms. Cushing, this is yours also. All right, two in a row. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one is actually for a variance to the minimum yard requirements. Um, the applicants are Toby and Andrea Collins, and they have a primary, re we're hoping to have a primary residence at 3990 Brantford Road in the New Smyrna Beach area. You can see based on the aerial photos right here, um, it is the parcel outlined in yellow. The property is currently zoned rural agriculture, which is A2 and requires a minimum lot size of five acres and a lot width of 150 feet. Um, the parcel is well under that lot size requirement and is approximately 1.22 acres. They have, however, provided a good non-conforming lot letter, verifying that it is a legal non-conforming parcel and is eligible for building permits. What makes this property unique, though, is that it is a corner lot, so it's subject to two front yards as well as two side yards. And in addition to that, the entire parcel is within the Natural Resource Management Area, also known as NORMA, and that requires an additional 50-foot wetland buffer. The front yard setbacks are a 50 foot minimum and the side yards are 25 feet. So those add an additional layer of setback requirements on top of that Norma buffer. The wetland buffer based off of the survey that we received kind of runs almost through this center of the entire parcel, which greatly limits the amount of buildable area in this particular area. Applicants are able to develop within the wetland buffer. However, they are required to pay fees through a wetland alteration permit 
and that's not the intention of the applicants. They want to build a residence while also maintaining the integrity of the area, as well as that buffer. In January of 2022, the owners were cited for clearing within that 50-foot wetland buffer area without permits. They were unaware at the time that they were clearing within this wetland buffer area, immediately reached out to our office along with Environmental to find ways to come up with a solution to this violation and make sure that they had, they mitigated their efforts in that wetland buffer as much as possible which has prompted the owners to come through with a variance so that their proposed residence will be closer to Brasher Road. Therefore, they're requesting a variance to reduce the front yard minimum requirements from Brasher Road from the required 50 feet to 30.5 feet for their single family residence. Staff has also taken property rights considerations when reviewing this request. We feel that the variance implicates considerations too. Um, the property owner has authority to use, develop, and improve his or her property. However, any improvements are subject to the local ordinance, including the lot size, unless varied. We do not believe that this variance implicates considerations one, three, or four. Upon final review of this request, staff has recommended approval of this variance as it meets all five applicable criteria for granting said variance. The request meets criteria one and two. This lot is significantly smaller than a conforming A2 parcel and still subject to the same setback requirements. In addition, they are um, experiencing enhanced, enhanced wetland buffer requirements because of the Norma overlay. This could be considered a special circumstance and condition peculiar to this specific parcel. And the applicants are not responsible for the size of the lot or the wetland buffer requirements. Staff feels that it also meets condition or criteria three. The literal interpretation of the code would deprive the applicants of rights commonly enjoyed by other properties in the same zoning classification. The buildable footprint of the property is heavily constrained due to the minimum yard and wetland buffer requirements, and they're attempting to reduce their wetland buffer impacts by moving the home closer to Brasher Road. It also meets criteria four that this is the minimum variance to make reasonable use of the land and allow development of a single family residence. It also meets criteria five. It is not likely to be injurious to the area or the surrounding wetlands. The proposed residence is in the rural area and adjacent roads are mostly traversed by adjoining property owners. The home will be developed similarly to other residences in the area and will be surrounded by thick vegetation. The request will likely be in harmony with the general intent of the purpose of the zoning ordinance. So should the PLDRC find the applicants have provided competent substantial evidence to support approval of this variance, one condition has been provided for consideration, and that is variance one is limited to the proposed family residence on the variance site plan. Thank you, and I'm available for any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Cushion. Any questions for staff? Hearing none, is the applicant, excuse me, is the applicant present? Can I get you to come forward, please? Good morning. Could I get your name and address for the record? Andrea Collins, 2397 Macasa Street, Geneva, Florida, 32732. Okay. Toby Collins, 2397 Macasa Street, Geneva. All right. You've heard the staff report. Any, anything you'd like to add to that? Yes. Okay. And you understand the condition put forth on this if it were to go through? And you're good with that? All right. Let's, Let's see if we got any public participation. Okay. Anybody like to speak to this case? We don't have any public participation form, so I'll close it. Or uh, does anybody like to ask the applicants any questions first? Just like to make a comment. I hope you leave as much. I've been down there. I hope you leave as much trees as you can, and that's a beautiful lot. It, yeah, and on it. Okay. All right. Um, we're going to close the floor and see where we go with this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make a motion on this one All right. to approve uh, variance twenty-two dash o nine o with the one condition that staff. Second. I got a motion to approve variance V22090. Uh, 
experience one and also to have the staff recommendations and a second from Ms. Shelley. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ms. Shelley, can I get the next page? Yes, sir. Case number V-22-091, a variance to separate non-conforming lots. Thank you. And Mr. Is it Shams? Yes. Oh. Hi, good morning. You're Thank new you. to us. <laughs> <laughs> First time up here. Okay. Well. Thank you. Um, Stephen Shams, Plan uh, Planning and Development Services. Um, uh, variance 22091 is a variance to separate non conforming lots. The applicant is Robert Vega of RJV Homes, agent for Michael and Cynthia Tanzler, the owners of the properties. They're requesting a variance to separate the lots on urban single family residential R9 zone property. Uh, the properties are located at 6597 and 6593 Turtle Mound Road. Uh, the owners currently live in a home on the adjoining parcel. They've lived there for 26 years. Their intent is to build a new home on the subject parcel and sell the old home. Uh, both lots are non-conforming due to lot area. Uh, the R9 zoning requires 7,500 square feet. They are 4,500 and 5,000 square feet, respectively. Um, the owners were unaware of the typical lot size at the time of purchase. In addition, the subject parcel is comprised of two lots, 75 and 76. If the variance was approved, the Land Development Office would perform a lot combination. Uh, staff finds the variance satisfies all five criteria and recommends approval. Uh, the property is platted in the Bethune Volusia Beach subdivision. It was platted in 1946. At the time, this lot pattern, measuring 25 feet wide and 100 feet deep, was typical. And the subdivision pattern is not a uh, responsibility of the applicant. Literal interpretation of the code would render the subject property an unbuildable lot, and this would be considered an unnecessary hardship on the applicant. Uh, this is the minimum variance required to allow the parcels to be separated and for the owners to obtain a building permit for a new single family home. Granting this variance would not be injurious to the area as what they were proposing is typical of all the surrounding properties. Staff also um, considered the property rights and found this variance implicates consideration too for the property owner's right to use, maintain, and develop and improve his or her property for personal use. And I'm available for any further I got a quick question. Yep. So we're it's so uh, 0730 and 0750. Those two parcels are currently combined. Um, no. So they have a common ownership. Common ownership. Yes. Yeah, so we're separating the lots. You're separating the lots. So you're are you separating lots 74 from 75 or 74 from 75 and 76? In other words, are they all three clustered together at this point? Correct. They are. Yeah, so 75 and 76 is the subject parcel. Yes. And the existing adjoining parcel where their home is located is 74. Is 74, okay. All right, and then after that, then you want them to combine lots 75 and 76? Correct. So they're not currently combined? Yeah. But they have the same parcel ID number? Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, I can see how. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions for staff? Okay. Is the applicant <laughs> present? Hello. <clears throat> Good 
morning, sir. Good, Good morning. Your name and address for the record. My name is Robert Vega. I live at 6211 Turtle Mound Road. I'm here to represent Michael and Cynthia Tansler. From the picture that you see right now, the uh, lot in question is the one with the red dot. The Tanslers currently live uh, at the lot right next door. So the next picture I'll show you, that's the house the Tanslers have been living in for the last 26 years. Um, they love New Smyrna Beach. They're getting ready to retire, but they want to build a new home. They purchased the lot next door to build their new home and then intend to sell the home that they're existing have existing there. And um, they were unaware that once you buy a piece of property that's next to it, and the fact that they own the property that they're living in, you, Volusia County basically joins those properties together. They weren't aware of that. So that's the, prop, that's the problem why we're here today. If anybody else in this whole building had purchased that lot, we wouldn't be going through this process just because they own the property next to next, next lot. So that's the, the lot. It's on the corner of Turtle Mound and Kingfish. Next, next. So um, the county is requesting us if we get the variance to join lot 76 and 75, which is typical what we would do. I don't, we don't have a problem with that. Next one, please. Um, this is our written petition. All five of the uh, questions that were asked of the county have been met. And next, next one, please. You'll see that we have uh, at all of the criteria of those five things. Next one, please. Um, and then the only other thing that, like I said, we would have to do is combine lot 75 and 76. We're in the process of actually doing that. If variance is granted, we move forward with the building permit. Next one, please. This is a site survey of the proposed site that we plan on building. It meets all the uh, setback requirements. We're not asking for any variance and stuff. Um, it's a typical lot in Volusia, in Volusia County, Bethune Beach area, 50 by 100. Um, it's very typical of all the homes there. Next slide, please. And this is the elevations of it. So it's like I said, it's very typical of all of the rest of the homes in that area. Any questions? Any questions for the applicant? Okay. Well, I was just looking at that because that's a cornered lot. You just you just did make it. He didn't. No, we didn't. we're within within all of the setbacks, sir. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. Let's see if we got any public participation. Wow. If we do, I'll ask to get you a chance for rebuttal. Anybody would like to speak to this case? Hearing now, we're going to close the floor for public participation and open up for commission discussion or a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve case V-22-091, one variance with one staff recommendation. I'll second that. Okay, I got a motion to approve variance 22091. Variance one with the one staff recommended condition for Mr. Costa and a second for Mr. Young. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. So. Yes. Case number PUD 22092, a rezoning from the general commercial and urban single family residential zoning classifications to planned unit development with a business subclassification. Thank you, Ms. Shelley. Ms. Smith. We're gonna mix this up a little bit and bring you a PUD. Um, <laughs> this is an infill project. It's in the Spring Hill Community CRA, which is the community redevelopment area an area we're looking to revitalize and improve. The site is at the southwest corner of South Adele Avenue and Mathis Avenue, just south of the city. The applicant has assembled three parcels that total approximately one half acre in size. There's an old building on the southern parcel and that is zoned R4. There are two vacant lots north of the building and they are zoned B4. The issue is that the, the property is split zoned and it's less than the one acre requirement for a B4 rezoning. So our solution is to help, to help the client is to do a PUD on this parcel. The PUD will allow the restaurant use in the existing building. The building can be expanded up to 5,000 square feet. By um, allowing the applicant to do this, the development agreement provides for stormwater retention. There is no stormwater retention now on either of these sites. Uh, the project will include a landscape buffer. That size varies based on the existing site conditions, um, but is much better than what's out there now, which is two dirt lots. Uh, this will provide dedicated access points from Mathis and South Adele. 
And our development agreement also will allow up to 14 parking spaces, but that can be reduced down to a minimum of seven if site conditions require modifications. Because again, there have been things on this property and there are some site conditions that might influence the final site plan design. We are gonna allow the site to be fenced with a six foot tall black metal picket fence around the perimeter. And the PUD will be limited to the restaurant use. Any new proposals require the site to come into compliance with the current zoning requirements. Uh, this will allow the site to be redeveloped. It'll bring food options to an area in need of revitalization. And I think it can provide a safe space in the neighborhood if it's redeveloped. So we recommend that the PLDRC forward the rezoning application to the County Council with a recommendation of approval. And we do have the applicant here and he may give you his secret crab recipe. It's really nice to him. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Okay, any questions for staff? Okay, is the applicant present? Good morning, sir. I'm doing good. Let me get your name and address for the record. My name is Terrell Johnson. My address is 701 South Stone Street, the land, Florida, 32720. And I'm here concerning a property at 918 South Adele um, in the RCA, right here community. Okay, you heard the staff report. Is there anything you'd like to add to it? I'm just ready to get going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds let's, good, though. Let me see if we got any questions for you. Do we have any questions for you? What, what kind of crabs do you serve? <laughs> Maryland style garlic crab. Maryland, Maryland style garlic crab, butter crab. Maryland style? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see if we have anybody who'd like to speak to this case. I don't have any forms, but if there's anybody in the audience who'd like to speak to this case, I will see where we go with it, okay? Are you good with everything that the PUD stated in there? The PUD that they require, all the requirements? No, no we've been in contact. So you're good with we're everything, working, right? We're working, we're, we're, we got everything pretty much. Okay, in all right. Direction, so okay. We're good. We've been in contact with county and the county's been they've been helping along okay we're, we're moving forward all right okay just excited to keep, to keep it just to get, to get it going <laughs> <laughs> okay all right sir we're going to close the floor for public you can have a seat now we're going to have a close floor for public participation and open up for commission discussion i will say that i'm very familiar with this and this is going to be a definite plus for this area and uh i'm ready to move forward with it Well, Mr. Chair, then I'll make a motion that we forward the rezoning application, case number PUD 22 092, to County Council for final action with a recommendation of approval. Second. Okay, I got a motion to forward the rezoning application, case number PUD 22092, to the County Council for, ac for final action with recommendation of <laughs> approval. From Mr. Costa and a second from Ms. Shelley. Any discussion on the motion? Yeah, before we vote, where's that crab recipe at? <laughs> <laughs> we, we may take a while on this. Now, where's that recipe? <laughs> Careful now. <laughs> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We look forward to trying it out. Yeah. All right, Ms. Shelley, can I get the next case, please? Case number V22093, variances to the minimum yard requirements and maximum lot coverage on urban mobile home zoned property. Thank you, Ms. Jelly. And Mr. Hanson. Uh, good morning once again. Michael Hanson from Planning Development Services. Uh, this particular property is uh, a lot in section two of the Terramar Mobile Home Park. It's zoned MH5, so a little bit different than the other ones that I've done over the last few months with the PLDRC. We have two variants, one to reduce the uh, south, yard, or south front yard from 20 feet to 10 feet to help site the proposed residents. And then also variance two is a variance to increase the maximum lot coverage from 35% to 35.14%. To the uh, zoning classification, as I mentioned, is MH5. It's within the Mosquito Lagoon. Local plan and the Indian River Lagoon surface water improvement management overlay zone. Uh, the property is a corner lot, as you can see on the variant site plan. 
at the corner of Cedar Way and Cedar Court. The applicant has a lot that it measures approximately 4,838 square feet. This would normally be considered a, a substandard lot and, and non-conforming. However, due to that court case from 1993 for Caramar, the Lots and the, the parcels, parcels dimensions within lots or sections one, two, and three of Terramar were all confirmed by a circuit judge. So we've been advised not to have to address the non conforming lots within Terramar. The front yard setback for the MH5 zoning classification is 20 feet. So their applicants meeting it on the, the east side of the property, however, as, as you can see on the variant site plan, they're looking to reduce that by 50% on the south side of the property, clo closer to Cedar Court. Uh, the part of the reasoning for that request after speaking with the applicant is the applicant wanted to site their home and carport a little further off of the actual property line than would necessarily be allowed to. So the side yard setbacks, which would be on that north side and west side of the property are five feet. You can see a dotted line that highlights a five foot drainage utility easement. So the applicant could theoretically build the property to that line. However, on the other side of the property line, it is uh, there's construction with a another residence on the north and another residence on the west. So the applicant is trying to get a little further separation from their, their carport. So that's why the, the variance request for variance one. As far as the, the measurement of the proposed shed at 10 feet by 10 feet, the carport at 20 by 50 and the home at 20 by 50, it puts the applicant right at 1,700 square feet. So because of the lot size at 4,838, it puts the applicant right at 35.14%, which is essentially six square feet more than it would be allowed with the 35% limit for lot coverage. If the property hadn't received a, essentially a, a corner clipping due to the way the Cedar Way and Cedar Court intersection meet, this is more than likely be a 5,000 square foot lot, which is typical for a lot of the lots in the area and within this section of Terramar, which the 35% limit would be 1,750 square feet as opposed to where it's at right now, which ends up being 1,693.5 square feet. As far as the analysis and recommendation for the particular case, Staff made the recommendation based on variance one that the applicant met four out of the five criteria for granting said variance, uh, noting that the applicant failed criteria four as the variance request is not necessarily the minimum necessary. It's the minimum necessary to install the mobile home carport and shed as configured on the site plan, but it's, it's possible that the applicant could potentially redesign to minimize the impact of that front yard setback. But as I mentioned, the applicant's trying to get further separation from the neighbors in the event of uh, essentially like a fire or something like that breaking out for the safety of, the, of their property. Um, and that was the only criteria of that particular variance that staff had to make a determination for failure and thus the recommendation for denial. Otherwise, criteria one, two, three, and five all met the, the criteria necessary for granting said said variance. Uh, variance two was a variance to increase the maximum lot coverage from 35 to 35.14. That ended up failing three of the criteria necessary for criteria two, three, and four. So yes, there are special circumstances unique to the property due to its size and the, the corner uh, clipping of the property. However, the development of the property is completely the result of the applicant's own actions. The literal interpretation of the zoning ordinance would prevent the applicant from being able to cite the property as the variant site plan shows and would require a reduction in the covered square footage. Um, as I mentioned, though, that ends up being 6.3 square feet of excess coverage that we're, we're dealing with. 
um, criteria four is that it is the minimum variance necessary to make use of the land as proposed by the site plan. However, it's possible that it could have been redesigned to reduce the extra 6.3 square feet, and thus the recommendation for denial. Uh, property rights consideration staff has considered the property rights of the owner, and the owner has the ability to improve their property. However, any improvements are subject to local ordinances unless varied by the PLDRC. There is one condition, obviously, that the variance is limited to the dimensions as depicted on the variance site plan. With that, I'll stand for any questions that the PLDRC may have. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Any questions for staff? Just a clarification. I just want to make sure that we're kind of understanding this right. The side, so, the side yard setbacks are actually five feet, correct? Yes, sir. The, there, you know, this house has two fronts. That's so correct. So that's why, okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Is the applicant present? Good morning, sir. If you just state your name and address for the record. Yes, it's Andrew Hun, 4332 Cedar Way, Edgewater, Florida. Okay, you've heard the staff report. Is there anything you'd like to add to that? Um, was the recommendation to deny the variances? Is that that was the staff recommendations. They have the five criteria they have to abide by. They can't get into that gray area where we can. Okay, as far as the uh, variance for the uh, lot coverage, um, I can reduce the size of the shed from 10 by 10 to 8 by 10, which would fall within the, uh, the range on that. And as far as the uh, layout of the property, um, if, if I were not to put my carport where it is, basically my home would be like right up against the home on the north side of me. And if you look at the, the uh, survey, they have already constructed a, uh, I don't know if it's a laundry area or what that's infringing on my property. And I was hoping not to have to do anything, you know, to, to have them remove that as well. So that is uh, something to add to it. All right, sir. Any questions for the applicant? I do have one public okay. participation form. I'll let them speak and give you a chance for rebuttal after they've spoken, OK? OK. okay. Uh, is it a Mr. Goss? I believe that's for the next case, Chair. You're right. OK. <laughs> We don't have any public participation forms. Anybody like to speak to this case? Hearing now, we're going to close the fourth public participation and open up for commission discussion or a motion. I'll make a I'll, first. I'll make a comment. This this is typical of that area. I lived for a number of years on Williams Road, which was just a few feet from that. Uh, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, variance twenty two dash o ninety three with the one condition. One and two, sir? Yeah, both, both one and two okay. with the one staff condition. Second. I got a motion to approve variance 22-093. Variance is one and three, two with a one condition from staff from Mr. Young and a second from Ms. Shelley. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ms. Shelley, can I get the next case, please? Yes, sir. Case B-22094, variance to separate non-conforming lots. Good morning again. Okay, Mr. Uh, Shams? Yes, Stephen Shams. This variance is to separate non-conforming lots. Subject to adjoining parcels are on rural residential zoning. The owners are related as mother and son, and they applied to adjust the lot lines with a minor revision of 30 feet. Subject parcel will provide 30 feet to the adjoining parcel to make it conforming. This lot line adjustment will not make adjoining will not conforming. 
And this uh, transfer of lot line will be consistent for residential zoning. Uh, because common ownership exists, the lots must be separated. Land Development Office has issued a notice of intent to approve the lot line adjust adjustment. Variance is approved. Staff reviewed and found this satisfies all five criteria of the zoning. We have the, the variance. The parcels were created in 1978. Time they were zoned A1 and met the minimum size and width requirement. They were administra administratively rezoned in 1994. Created the non through the lot width requirement of the rural residential class. The applicants were not responsible for the change and literal interpretation of the code would prevent the owners from making any lot line adjustments. This is the, the minimum of variance to allow the parcels to be separated, the owners to obtain approval for the lot line adjustment. Granting this variance would not be injurious to the area. And there is no discernible change to either parcel. Staff did consider property right considerations and found that this variance is applicable to consideration for the right of a property owner to dispose of his or her property through sale or gift. Available. Any questions for staff? My understanding this lot line adjustment is just for the access to the road, is that correct? Is that what we're doing here? Um, it's a, it's a uh, lot line adjustment of 30 feet. That would be that little, I believe it's the, to get to the road rather than put an easement over it, is that correct? Yeah. Okay. okay, thank you. Is the applicant present? Can I get your name and address for the record? Yes. Jeannie Casaro. I live at 17015 Street in Orange City. And I'm speaking on behalf of my father today, who is the homeowner at 1490 Fisher Road, Robert Scott. There was Laura in 70. Um, the only thing that I want to add is I just want to reinstate simply the only intent of this simply um, 30, a 30 foot portion of Laura's property to Robert Scott's been maintained over 20 years of ownership that he has had. Right. Okay. Can I get any questions for the applicant? Okay. We do have a public participation forum, and after they speak, I'll give you a chance for rebuttal, okay? <clears throat> and now we go into Miss, is it Mr. Goss? Or Miss Goss, I'm sorry. I guess I needed my glasses. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Good morning. My name is Z Goss. I live at 1526 Facial Road, Deland, Florida. Uh -huh. uh, I live on the five acres south of 1474 and 1490 properties. We've been neighbors for 50 years. I object to this variance because of the following four concerns. One, the zoning here is rural residential. It's an older community of single homes on various property sizes. Robert Scott has applied for a non-conforming variance on his and his mother's property. I was told the reason was that uh, the wheelchair-bound resident in back of 1474 property could take a direct path by 1474 to 1490 instead of having to take the roadway down Ridgewood uh, by Beresford and uh, over to Facio to visit. This already happens. Why is this variance necessary? Is this could just be a neighbor's visit. I don't need a variance to go to my neighbor's <coughs> to borrow a cup of sugar or visit. It's just the neighborly thing to do. My second concern is this strip would allow access from the back property to 1490 and from 1490 to the back properties in both directions. Mr. Scott has a successful commercial air conditioning business and grew up with my kids. He's a hard worker. 1490 has a home on the property 
oversized metal shed, long flatbed trailer, bobcat, pig, chickens, a couple of vans, cars, and many pulled air conditioning uh, units from jobs, etc. In other words, his, you, he's used up all the space of his two plus acres. I can see an agreement with the adjoining property owner to allow placement of his business equipment overflow on their property for maybe a financial benefit. Number three, I asked, what other kind of conveyances can use this strip? Motorcycles, golf carts, dirt bikes, bobcats, etc. My fourth concern, you know, nothing stays the same. People die, properties are transferred or sold. Or sold. Will this established uh, access stay with the property and back and go to the new owners? I thank you for your consideration this morning. Whatever the outcome, I pray that we all continue to, to have the good neighboring spirit we have had all these years. Okay, thank you. Um, and the answer to your question, it will stay with the property. It does not, if they was there be. I can't hear you. To answer your question is about transfer of ownership, if this would be remain there, yes, it would. It would remain with the property. So the new owners would still have that ability with the new lot lines. Okay. Any questions for the speaker? All right. Thank you, ma'am. And I'll ask the applicant to come back forward. You've heard the concerns. Would you like to add to anything or just leave it as is? Um, again, I would just say that the sole intent was since God has been maintaining that portion of the property for as long as he's owned the property. They came to an agreement that Laura and Teresa would gift the property his property since he has over the years. Okay. okay. Do we have any other public participation for this case? Hearing none, I'm going to close the floor for public participation or for commission discussion or a motion. Uh, I, well, I have a question. That just got brought up, um, probably for staff. So these two parcels have been as one for quite some time. Yeah. And so parcel 032, which is the one on the back half, has been actually using what is now what they're what they're trying to deed over to him as a gentleman's easement, for the most part, to access his properties. That how this work? Okay, so now we're just legitimizing that easement that he's been using for all these years. Yeah, the purpose of this variance is because there was common ownership between uh, for, for both properties. It right. needs to be legally separated so that it can have two owners. I understand that, but at the same time, you're also moving this line around. Yes, that's just to make it conform with the rural residential requirement. That's what I'm saying. So we're, in essence, giving them the right away that they've been using for the last all right thank you that's what i want to know okay <clears throat> any other nope. discussion on this case i'll make a motion okay i'll make a motion that um we approve case number v-0 uh, v-22-094 and i do not believe yeah with no conditions second I got a motion to approve variance V22094 from Mr. Costa and a second from Ms. Shelley. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Ms. Shelley, you're in the home stretch. Yes, sir. Case number V22095, a variance to separate non conforming lots on prime agricultural zoned property. Mr. Hansen. Good morning once again, uh, Michael Hansen, Planning Development Services. Uh, for the last agenda item for the variances for the day, uh, we have property at 1165 Emporia Road in Pearson. The property is a non-conforming um, 5.48 acre property that is zoned A1, has a future land use of AR. Uh, the intent is for a single family residence it is within the Jacksonville Bombing Range Complex Military Zone local plan. Uh, if 
on the variant side plan, you can see that the the two properties uh, are next to each other. They were split in approximately 1981. At the time, the property was zoned A3. A3 is a transitional agricultural zoning as it is today that requires a minimum lot size of one acre. The subject property was administratively rezoned in 1994, which turned the A3 into A1, which is prime agriculture, which requires 10 acres. In, in the event that the rezoning in 1994, which happened to be consistent with the comp plan at the time, didn't happen, this particular variance case wouldn't be necessary today because it would be considered a conforming parcel at 5.48 acres. The applicant inquired as to the buildability vehicles into the county offices in approximately 2011. They bought the property in 2012 after that, and they've waited on, on such time to now where they want to actually develop a property with, with a single family home. Uh, the analysis recommendation for the variance staff made a recommendation for approval based on the applicant meeting all five of the necessary criteria for granting said variances, noting the special circumstance related to the administrative rezoning, which created the nonconformity in the first place. The applicant was not responsible for that. The literal interpretation of the zoning ordinance would require the applicant to seek this variance to separate nonconforming lots, which they're doing due to the common ownership with the adjoining property. The requested variance is necessary to make reasonable use of the parcel which existed in its current configuration since 1981, and the staff finds the variance is harmonious with the general intent of the zoning ordinance comprehensive plan and non-injurious to the area. Property rights consideration staff has considered the property owner's rights as they relate to the variance request itself. The owner does have the ability to improve their property, uh, granting this variance would enhance the property owner's ability to potentially sell the property, knowing that the lot could be built on as long as it could meet the A1's zoning classification setbacks. There is no ver uh, condition offered with this variance. I'll stand for any questions the PLDRC may have. Thank you, Mr. Hanson. Any questions for staff? Hearing none, I'll ask that. Good to come forward. Good morning, sir. Could I get your name and address for the record? Good morning. Uh, Dwight Flowers. I go by Dean. Uh, okay. Address 2745 South Woodland Boulevard in Deland, 32720. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be 1165 for your road. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you've heard the staff report. Anything you'd like to add to that? I recommend that we do a motion to approve it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> we'll see where we go with that. <laughs> I don't have anything else to add. All right. I don't have any public participation forms, uh, and I don't think we have anybody who wants to speak to this case. If we do, I'll give you a chance for rebuttal. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone here like to speak to this case? All right, sir, uh, I know you didn't turn in a public participation form. I'll go ahead and state your name and address. And then once you're done speaking, I would like for you to fill out one of these forms and give it to Miss Ray on my farthest left over here, okay? Sure. My name's Klein Moody. I live at 1175 Emporia Road uh -huh. on the other side of this Dean's property there. Okay. Um, I don't really have a problem with any of that. He's worked out access so I can still get past my barn because the, the split on those two properties, my survey says it's 2.82 feet off the corner of my property, my corner of my barn, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. CBS building. His says it's eight inches into it. So I guess we have to go somewhere else and get that resolved. Yeah, we don't, we're not here to resolve that. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing I'd really like to know from y'all is how do these properties like this get split up like that? Does somebody approve that? I'll let staff answer that question. <laughs> so our zoning ordinance came before our comprehensive plan. And so when, we, when the comprehensive plan rules came into effect in the 90s, we had to go back and look at all of our zoning classifications to make those two things consistent. And in some cases, it did make certain properties non-conforming. And that's why we are here now to fix those. And, and just to add on about, you know, we don't control who buys and sells property. 
like you can you can buy and sell property and you know you don't tell us you just kind of record it or not record it <laughs> which is a problem um we come in after the fact when the property has already been split by deed and someone wants to pull a permit and then we kind of have to sort out the mess in terms of here's what you need to fix here's what you need to make a legal lot um, to get your building permit to get underway so um you know everyone has the right to buy and sell property i can sell you a postage stamp you know sized piece of land that i own and that's 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 a legal you know legal transaction but you can't pull any building permits on it um so that's that's kind of how it is is that there's this private com um, market component and then we have to follow up to legitimize it in order to grant permits even though it's non-conforming uh, we see this a lot I yes, yes. Stuff. You can sell anything. You can, I can, I can sell you a postage size, size, you know, piece of land. land. Um, but once again, you can't pull any permits on it. That's why you do your due diligence when you're buying a piece and make sure that you can do what you want to do on the property. Buy the other piece. <laughs> if you'll just get one of those. No, not this for me. They're back there in the back. Oh, she has, a, oh, she here, has one over She's got one right there. I'm sorry. I'm gonna have you running all over the place here. <laughs> Anyone else like to speak to this case? Hmm. All right, we're gonna close the floor for public participation, open up for commission discussion or a motion. Here, I'll make a motion that we approve variance one on case number V-22-095 with There's no, conditions. no conditions. Second. I got a motion to approve V-22-095 from Mr. Costa and a second from Ms. Shelley. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right. And I take it we do not have any old business. Is that correct, Ms. Smith? That's correct. Okay. Do we have any other public items? No, sir. Any staff items? Yes, sir. We have two items. The first, you may have noticed that you saw, I think, five different cases today of non-conforming lots. Um, we have been assured that our folks are working on the ordinance to, so that we can do that administratively and you no longer have to do that. It's our hope that we can bring that to you next month, but we'll give them a little bit of time if we need to and say within the next two months, we'll get that to you so that you don't have to deal with those administrative issues anymore. All right. Um, the second issue is you may have noticed some new faces in the room. Um, on the other side of the room, we have Sarah Cushing, who recently was promoted to a planner in our department, and the city of Orem Beach just stole her from us. So Sarah will be leaving us next Tuesday, so you won't see her anymore. Um, I believe you've seen Kristen Ray before. She is one of our new staff assistants and doing a bang-up job. She's the one who operates all of this equipment and makes sure that everything goes right for us and you get everything you need for the meetings. Um, you have met Michael Hansen before. He's been at a few of our meetings. He will continue and has promised that he loves the county and is going to stay with us. So you'll see Michael again. And then behind him, we have Steve Shams. He hails from DOT planning office, and he's going to be a really great asset for us as we're moving forward with some of these more complicated projects that involve a lot of transportation issues. So I think that's all of the staff changes. Now. Okay, while you're talking about staff, I want to congratulate you on your senior planning manager taking over Ms. Jackson's place. Thank you. Susan I'm looking retired. forward to you working with you. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. You're not retiring anytime soon, are you? <laughs> no, sir. Student loans. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, commission comments. Anybody? I do have a comment. Go ahead, Mr. Cross. It's actually more of a question than a comment, and this is for Mr. Storia. So we require all applicants to state their name and their physical addresses. Yes, that's traditional for quasi-judicial proceedings. Um, it's, it's, there's actual case law on it. Uh, someone challenged the requirement, and the, the, I think there's like, uh, it's a case down in Miami against Airbnb. Um, where it was a requirement as part of the quasi-judicial proceeding to provide your name and address. And the courts have said, yes, uh, as part of that area, um, you can require it because it, it provides information to, um, on the speaker of how close they are to the property that you're actually um, making a ruling over. Okay. And what about 
when we have public comments on cases? For public comments on cases, then yes, that's actually also because it, it provides that same criteria of how close are they, how affected are they. You kind of want to know if they are an adversely affected person by their address. Now, if they are an exempt individual, such as a uh, police officer, mm -hmm. sheriff's deputy, firefighter, you know, there's, a, there's a large list they do not have to give their address. And the, and the reason I asked this question is because I watched with uh, intently the, uh, the special counsel meeting they had two weeks ago with regard to land use. And, <clears throat> and in, during that meeting, the chair basically said that you didn't have to state your name and address because of they may be endangered. So that brings me to my point here. We don't have any of those cases today, but we have had cases where it's a little bit heated mm -hmm. and the parties are definitely at odds. And so I ask that of you is, do we have that capability or are we required by the law to have those statements done? You are not required to do it. You can't. If you, if you do a requirement, it's legal. It is, it is a legal uh, requirement of anyone who comes to speak in mainly a quasi-judicial setting. So your variances, your special exceptions, your PUDs, um, and, and sometimes your conference of plan amendments, um, because you want to know the relationship of the speaker to the subject property. Well, very helpful to me, yes, I, I, I agree. I'm not, but I'm, ask, I'm asking that question because I'm sure that at some point we're gonna have a case where it's gonna be. Right, you do, you do not have to have that, but um, anyone who, a member of the public who wants to challenge that, you know, that, that decision, um, they have not basically shown that they are an adversely affected person within that received notice. So they're basically removing one of the easy avenues for them to, um, you know, contest the, the application if it was approved or denied because they don't have, they don't have that relationship to the property on the record. It's just, I'm a interested person, I want to speak. There's no so they could, deny, they, they could they basically could decline, decline giving that information, but yet still speak as, as yes. public speaker. Yes, okay. but it removes some of their rights to, say, appeal or contest in the future. Okay. So it's, it's a little bit of a trade-off. All right, that was my question. Thank you. Any other commission comments? <clears throat> okay, I have one here. Um, if you haven't filled out your Form 1, turn it into the Supervisor of Elections, your financial state oh I use it yeah financial interest not a statement you got to July the first to do so if not <laughs> you we may not see you next meeting <laughs> but anyway it has to be turned in by July the first it's your form one you should have received one from the uh, supervisor of elections and turn it in I'm and or is that or do you have a list of people that haven't turned them in because I'm pretty sure reminder, I said I'm one of general turned it in yeah, I turned mine in. Yeah. I haven't turned mine in yet. Maybe this is for me. <laughs> I mailed mine in, so I hope you got it. Well, it sounds like it's for me. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'm being a little rebellious here, huh? <laughs> okay. Do I have any press and citizen comments? Journal. <laughs>